All right, all right. Today we're going to be talking about artifacts in your x-ray imaging. Why do you care about them? How can you identify them? As a x-ray technologist, something that you're going to deal with on a regular basis is what we call image artifacts. This isn't like a fun thing like Indiana Jones going and searching for an artifact. This is actually an artifact meaning there's something in our image chain which isn't quite happening as we expect and thus we're getting an image which looks a little strange for one reason or another. And we want to really identify the types of artifacts so that you can look at an image and know this image has an artifact that's not actual human anatomy which is making the image look that way. We're going to go through different types of artifacts, how are they caused, and then what is the resultant image effect. First off, we've talked about motion before. Things are a little simpler in x-ray because it's a 2D. Essentially, we just have a blur in the image. You can think about it, if you think about a little point here, you have a nice round circle here. This is the ideal image. In reality, what could happen if there's motion up and down of the actual object during the scan, instead of a nice round point, you're actually gonna get a blurred out kind of line. And that actually what you're seeing there is a fancy word we use to call it is a convolution, but it's basically moving that object and just repeating and adding that object on top of itself. If you do that several times with a circle, if you add several circles as we move them, what we'll get is essentially that stretched out circle along that direction, which kind of resembles a line. The same thing can happen with the whole anatomy. If the whole hand was moving, instead of a nice sharp crisp hand that you're seeing right here, if during the x-ray exam the hand was moving, you could then see blurring. And the blurring is going to actually blur out edges. And the edges that are going to get most blurred are those that were in this direction. Because we had the motion, you're actually going to get blurring perpendicular to the direction. You can see that here. This is kind of an extreme example. But you can see the edges of the bone going in the up-down direction are decently preserved here. But it's very difficult to appreciate the edges in the left-right direction in the image because those were blurred out. Another type of artifact we can have is from highly attenuating objects. If the patient is still wearing jewelry, necklace, things that are highly attenuating, those actually will superimpose on the image because what you're gonna see on the image is just the projection of everything that's in that direction. But if there is jewelry, that is gonna show up on the image. For that reason, we typically recommend to take off all the jewelry, take off bras that have underwires, anything that would have metal, you would take that off for your x-ray acquisition. Something else, which actually I personally didn't think of before I started in this is hair. Hair can actually be attenuating. And when that hair is all in one place, if you have lots of dreadlocks, or in this case, if you have a ponytail, that ponytail is going to lead to more attenuation that's all in one place. And thus, you're going to get kind of extra attenuation. That extra attenuation might not be due to actual changes in anatomy inside of the skull, but could be due to hair outside of the skull. Another thing is what we call a stitching artifact. On a lot of x-ray systems now, you can take multiple acquisitions and the x-ray system will put them together so that you can read it as just one large x-ray. But sometimes there's kind of imperfect stitching due to actual physical effects such as the change in the intensity across the what we call superior inferior direction of the beam or the change in the actual energy of the beam. We call that beam hardening 
and specifically the heal effect uh, because you're actually going to have a different energy on either what we call the heal side or the non-heal side. These kinds of things can lead to differences in your attenuation such that you can see at the boundary there's a seam. There's actually software now to try and reduce those effects. Other artifacts you could have are on a CR system. You could have a double exposure where you expose the plate once and then without reading out the plate or without actually erasing the plate, you could get what's called a double exposure. In that scenario, you might see another anatomy that's superimposed on the anatomy of your primary interest. That's something you definitely want to watch out for. Make sure with your CR plates, you go through the proper erasure cycle and that you're doing quality assurance to make sure that the system is erasing the plates well. Another thing you can have is grid artifacts. If you're using an x-ray grid, this is an artifact in the up-down direction here, and if there is not either a software or motion of the grid in order to essentially blur out the grid lines, you could get grid lines on your images. Again, on the CR side, if you had an issue in the readout, where for instance, there was a problem reading out one of the rows, remember on a CR system, you go across and you'll read out the panel, then the whole panel will translate You'll read out another row, the whole panel will translate, you'll read out, read out another row. Namely, you're going to have optical photons coming out, then those are going to get read in. If there's an issue on that side and something's getting blocked, for instance, if the same part of the image is getting blocked, what can happen is you would see essentially a line in your image on the CR image. If you see something like this, where you have a structure, either you know a rectangular structure or a triangular structure, one possibility on an X-ray system is that is actually due to part of the collimator assembly that has come loose. If part of the collimator assembly had come loose and it is actually obscuring part of the field of view, that could lead to an overlap in your image, something like this. Again, this is not extremely common, but if you see something like this, it is the case that you would want to let the manufacturer know that they could come and do quality assurance and potentially make updates to the system as necessary. There's also the possibility to have what we call ghosting in the image or detector lag where if you take an image acquisition and then you later take another acquisition, this is now on a DR system that we're talking about. It has a similar visual effect to like the double exposure on the CR system where you took an acquisition and then there was motion and then you take another acquisition. That can actually lead to, again, two superimposed images and potentially they could have a little bit of misregistration if the object was in a different position between these two images. Something else that can happen, especially on the lower end system, for um, instance, being used bedside, is the possibility of backscatter. In that case, it is possible sometimes that you can get backscatter from the components that are essentially beyond your detector, but goes X-ray is passing through the body, then hitting the detector, then the electronics beyond the detector. And if there's backscatter from those electronics beyond the detector, that can actually influence the image quality in some scenarios. From the perspective of the digital system, there are corrections that are used. And in the case that there's changes to the detector, it's possible that there can be essentially bad pixels or bad detector elements, bad DELs, that are not properly accounted for in the calibration. This can lead to kind of 
spurious bad detector elements. It's also possible for there to be essentially strips that are a little bit different. They're showing up a strip in the image that's a little bit different because that part of the image is actually getting read out through one ASIC or one specific piece of electronics. And if it is a little bit off in what we call the calibration, it can look a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. Both of these kind of things, you're going to want to talk to your manufacturer and make sure that the system is well calibrated, that you can get nice uniform image quality across your field of view. I'll talk about one more, which is called a CR radiation fog. If your panels are sitting around for a long time, you want to make sure and actually do an exposure of those panels. For instance, if they were sitting for a really long time and they were in an area where there was some level of background radiation, it's possible that those panels had some exposure over time and thus there would be some background level of what we call latent image on that panel already. So you're going to want to make sure and do a clearing of that panel in order to not have this radiation fog.